This poem is titled, Possible Reasons the Window Was Left Open That Day. Perhaps you spent each day by the window, adjusting your voice until the sun fell like a loose door sign. You concluded that no matter how many times you throw your voice out of the window, it would never be a radiant, a long enough bedsheet to signal the attention of people with. Perhaps you wanted your palms to fly out of the window and transform into a chorus of purple rain. Bystanders will have no choice but to take notice of, to let it soak their skin, to let it sit inside them the way it sat inside you. Perhaps there is someone who came into your life through the rich sand-coloured window, not through the bolted carnelian door. You left the window open in case of spontaneity. You feared they loved the act of sneaking in more than they loved the act of loving you. Perhaps you left the window open so God could find your dead body. Dear child of sorrow, may we remember the majestic shades of your voice. May the windows of our ears remain open to hear the parts of your voice we miss. The only window alive. I've always been charmed by corners, the parts like struggles to accept. Who here knows how long it takes to kill a toxic word? Who has ever said a hateful thing to what will never speak? A white wall where visitors come with hand sanitizer or Instagram accounts to marvel at such a perfect composition. The only window alive, meaning a metaphor for those who find it difficult to believe in the direction they drag their bodies. The worst way to go is with knowing. I have struggled to understand the end of fire my whole life. Not the thing itself, more the way it seems to sing to whatever it destroys. in which I am not Thomas Chatterton, Ian Curtis, or Sylvia Plath. If birds have split the sky in two, if clouds as thin as shirts, if shirts as thin as the eyelids of the blind, if tongues break rank like weeds and leave the mouth, its furor bunker overrun, the suicide of saying. Towns if towns are blank expressions worn by motorways, my blue tattoo, the singing line made blatant skin. The libraries at night, illegal yellow light like gambling dens or millionaires' aquariums. Of my body is a poem, both hieroglyph and enzyme a stain against striped mattresses. My body, lovely meat prescription, glowing like a gilded steak, phantom atlas, map of phantom pains, laid out beneath the window of my squat just so. All those nights spent sat on the edge of the bed in sad, face-palming paradoilia, trying to shut out the dead. But here they come. It's getting bad. At the clinic, venlafaxine, how it sounds like science fiction. Rispidal, its patent name, a second Camelot. Give me forms and a fitness to work, dear God. When the morning is a steel comb dragged across my face. Get undressed, pitch nakedness like a fit. For a pair of purple breeches, the glammy swoon of dying to be beautiful and counterfeit, to whip my proly hopes into pentameter. I am a plain girl, genderless as a stab vest, thin girl, lavishly schizophrene, androgynous as GM corn, and my eyes can look literal daggers. In the mirror, I watch my madness taking shape like a YouTube tutorial for perfect hair. I can see everything in tiny microdot detail. I see the poem, a dirty word spelled out backwards on a pocket calculator. I see publishers binding our legends in human skin. If I refuse to eat, become a hair serpent and find myself stubbornly purified, 
I am a darger heart, suspended like an olive in brine, most immaculate shipwreck, rudest north, if pain like a toothpick stuck in a cherry. A poet is an octopus, her brain is in her eye. The eye is both a tyrant and a pervert. If tired of seeing, skin is a blanket statement. If Chatterton, glowing, stoned, if Chatterton, proto Cobain, stretched out in the grim luitic flux of his genius, medication makes me stupid as a shaken baby, half a brain paid for in instalments. Poems elude me and so I chant richer, stranger into the two quid chocolate cake mix. There is a chill and delicate agony, like a rip in a fingerprint. In a contest with the moon, I am not even best at drowning. If I live, should I live? If I take my medication, if my benefits come through. Poem, this poem, an outline left of me in chalk. If walls have ears, if woods can talk. At war with the grave. One. I have been at war with the grave for some time now, is another thing he said not to have said. Three days before he couldn't not say any more. How we love to ventriloquize the dead. But what do I know? It's all so easy to pile on someone's memory, have them make grave pronouncements foretelling their grief. These quick quips keep coming. Centuries on, there's nothing like the wit of unrecognized genius, too dead to back chat to pastelize their demise. But let the painter paint and the poet eulogize. If we can't make misery sing, it will still make its own music anyhow, make a muse of itself. Two, it's still cruel in these ends when your ends don't meet. But Wallace, if I may, I trust you see no malice if I say you've rendered him angelic, martyr to the artist's cause, the picture of our perpetual unmoneyed struggles. It's just, it's just the poise, if that's the word. A self-poisoned youth made so postcard perfect, it's unsettling. I'm not sure suicide is sexy. For some time I've battled with the slick of his slackness, the suggestion of chest, the scatter of paper, the delicate allure of death, instead of a grimace, an almost grin. But what do I know? My outlook isn't so grim these days. Brook streets are spit from home, but my windows face a couple centuries away from him. You opened yours to the faded light of his remembered pain. You chose the oils to portray the room. I choose mine. Ambivalence is my home, though the plants on my sill also crane towards a dim sky and I've known shadows. This city has a way of drawing them out. They trail behind until we're long gone before forging a new shape, crawling into a new form. Thomas Chatterton speaks with a therapist after Edward Morgan. Can you describe those last hours? All events of the Minde are daily incidents. You are no longer a private citizen. You have a role in cultural life. Cultural Levelli Holder paid a no and he dinger when I starved. Thomas, I note that you perceive life as an aggressor. I activate a aggregate a accelerator. Let us try this. Close your eye and visualize your first memory. It is a woman knitting an alphabet before a fire. And this language you forge her, perhaps you could relinquish and speak her plainly to me. 
Plain speaking is for poet tasters and filibusterers. There is something infectious in this exchanger. Over time, my reputation will solidify with clarity. Over time, eh? Albion's legal folder will converge you in consensus on your majesty. I do not understand you. My words are crystal clear with poetic clarity. This session is ended. Now pay me.